Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I will compare the classic tourist photo to more interesting perspectives. Let's get started. I'm in front of the beautiful Museum of Art History in Vienna and we will take some classic tourist shots which have often mistakes in them because they don't really give you an interesting picture to look at. They are a walk-by snapshot, the lines are going everywhere, it's not clear what you're actually photographing and in this video I want to show you how to get a cleaner, clearer picture that tells a better story and has an interesting dynamic in it. One of the main mistakes I often see is that it's not really clear what the main subject is you're trying to photograph because there's a lot of stuff going on in the picture. So in this case you can see there's a ticketing box in the foreground then we have a light sticking in from the top right and a flagpole also in the background that is cluttering up the image. So select one thing that should be the star of your picture and then try to find a way to make that look as good as possible in your shot. So in this case I moved over to the Natural Historic Museum because it doesn't have these ticket boxes outside. I used the elephant in the center and then also the perspective from a low angle upwards to give the shot more dynamic and make everything centered and clear so we are really focused on it but also you can see that the foreground element makes everything a lot more playful. This brings us to the second point that is most of them are just snapshots on a walk by that have no build up of the landscape of the place where you are. This is a classic tourist photo, a snapshot on the walk by. The sculpture is in the center, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, but it, there is no setup of where we are, what the importance is. It doesn't follow the lines of the sculpture or the drama of the sculpture. It is photographed as we see it as passes by with our eyes. Here we have the alternative shot and it uses the composition and the dynamic of the sculpture to lead us into the picture. You can see the dynamic posing of the character, the movement of the horse leads us towards the building and the park in the foreground that sets the scene for us. So we see that this is all happening in a beautiful park but through the use of a vignette I'm focusing the main attention on the building in the background. This is why the back of the horse is darker and then only the front parts that lead into the picture have brighter elements as the building and I reduced also the brightness and saturation of the park in the foreground to take not too much attention. Here's an alternative shot that also uses the park in the foreground, sets the scene for the viewer and leads us into the picture. Why is this so important? Because the viewer looks through your camera, through your pictures, like through a keyhole. They haven't seen the rest of the place, so they don't know where the building is standing, what the building is surrounded by. So putting things in the foreground that set the scene, that create a landscape in which the building can live, gives us the opportunity to understand the full beauty of the place and the harmony that this building has with its surrounding. So when you come to the place, look around what kind of elements could you put into the foreground, what kind of perspective angles could you create. Maybe there's a path on the ground, maybe there's a tree or there is some bushes or other kinds of elements that you could put in the foreground before your main subject to tell more about the place but also to enrich the shot, maybe even carve out an interesting composition in your shot. Next, we want to look into the lines of the place but also of the subject you're photographing, for example of the building. So a classic way to do this is when you photograph 
a building just out of any kind of perspective the lines are going everywhere but if you go a little bit on an angle they go together perspectively that can be interesting or you go a little bit lower into the knees a little bit higher all of that can create an interesting perspective also you can look again for pathways or maybe for an alley with trees or other kind of elements that give you a perspective line that comes together that maybe highlights your subject in the middle so try to see these lines go a little bit around maybe with the camera in front of your eye this is what i often doing or i'm taking my smartphone and walking around with the camera open just to find could this be interesting or not from the lines that I am looking at. Here we have another classic tourist shot that happens more often than you think because we are distracted by all the amazing thing that's going on around us. So when you look at the lines, they're not going anywhere. They're not pointing to any specific point or leading the eye. At the same time, there's a lot of elements in here that take our attention away. For example, the shadow of the photographer or the e-scooter on the ground. Then also we have an electric box. This is a classic mistake to not cut out elements that are offending in the foreground and even some bottles left behind by party goers from the last night. So try to find a better position with cleaner lines. Here is our alternative shot and you can see that I'm using the perspective of a chain in the foreground to lead our eyes from our subjective perspective to the building in the background. At the same time, on the top right, I have a rider that I've pushed up by bringing my camera very low so that he is in the sky and we can easily see the silhouette of the rider. Also, the rider is pointing towards the building. So there we have another visual cue. The rest of the image is clean and there is not many offending objects in there. In this case, it is also important to point out how much impact the editing of the photo has. So here you can see the before shot before I edited it and how much the image changed. I'm using a lot of different effects and adjustments to bring out the character of the shots. But at the same time, as you can see here again, I'm using my vignette trick so that the building is brighter in the foreground and our attention is limited to the sides by making them darker. So a lot of these elements really define the shot. It's not just what happens in the camera. It's really important what you do afterwards in the software to give the shot the character you imagine for the photo. Here is an alternative shot that also uses the chains in the foreground to guide our eyes. The composition in the foreground mimics the architecture of the building in the background with the chains leading us to the center of the building. Then we have these two poles that are pointing upwards and also mimic the two towers or structures that we have left and right of the center building. Another element that's really important to point out here is how important it is to get up in the morning at sunrise to take your shots, not just because of the sunlight, but also because then the place is empty of people. Everybody is still at home. And because of that, you have so many more choices of interesting perspectives because during the day there are so many tourists standing here walking around that this perspective would not be possible as many other perspectives that I have shown you in the past. Another element that a lot of you are afraid of is to cover up the main element you want to photograph partially, not completely, of course. But if the image becomes more interesting by putting something in the foreground, even if it covers a bit the subject, the building, the person, the sculpture, it doesn't matter because the picture becomes more interesting. So a classic element of that is to photograph in between branches of trees or have flowers in the foreground, things that cover up a little bit of the picture, but they bring so much more interesting elements to the photo. One last point to think about are the different social media formats we have today. So try to take the photos 
horizontally, vertically, so you can afterwards crop them for your smartphone, for your computer, for Instagram, all these kind of different uses. Of course, finally, we want to bring all of these elements together into a dynamic shot. So when you think about these elements in the foreground, the different lines, the things that you could use to cover up parts of the building or other elements you want to photograph, in what kind of relation can you bring them together to have a nice dynamic and also to lead up to the main subject? That's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial. Bye.